We just got a bit, got a bit drunk and decided to do our thing, isn't it? Ran up in the shop with a knife. That was just a mad, drunken, fucking money thing, what I needed. He was like, give us the money. And he was just like, how much? And he was like, all of it, you fucking <laughs> donut. I thought I was going to get at least £600. But I didn't get fuck all. Bottle of soda, what got dropped at the door. Looking at a 10-year sentence. No, James! Oh, Oi! Oi! What went wrong? Come on, mate. Fucking hell. Done it. Re regret it, innit? it? I've always been like that. I always do the time. I don't care. As of 2014, nearly three quarters of young offenders in the UK will re-offend within 12 months of their release from custody. These figures rise year on year. However, the number of first-time offenders is decreasing yearly. This has created a vacuum, a hardcore of young re-offenders locked into a cycle of crime, jail, probation, and crime again. Abingdon, Oxfordshire, is like any other town in Britain. And like any other town in the country, there are a crew of boys who are well known to its residents and the police. They live on the Saxton Road estate. And while their neighbours might call them a menace, they often refer to themselves as Saki's finest. Uh, I've been in jail, he's been in jail, he's been in jail, he's been in jail. Ashley Cooper, or Coops to his friends, is 20 years old and has been a persistent re-offender since his early teens. He was recently arrested in connection with the attempted robbery of a local off-licence. If convicted, he is looking at up to 10 years in jail. With his bail date only days away, Coops is spending the weekend hanging out with his best friends and olders, Ross and Nathan, who have tried in vain to keep him from going down the route they did at his age. These two on um, uh, bad at the I do try and keep Stupid them on track. bastards! <laughs> <laughs> I don't care though, I'm used to it. He's in jail for stabbings before. I've, I've been in that jail. I just want to get a job, get money, get a car. Young offenders and stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I've been out of jail already, so it's alright. Standard, we got, we got chips yeah, in there anyway, bruv. He's, 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 what, he's what you call a jail man. <laughs> Shut up, you <laughs> What you go to jail? Oh, 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 you die, innit? Oi! Fucking me, eh? It's the shit you go to jail for. It's, it's stupid stuff, you know what I mean? The police are accusing them of, uh, uh, of doing an armed robbery in a shop. Armed robbery, stabbings, shit like that. So, yes. It's a false allegation. False allegation. You must be mine, I was in for nearly a decade. We've already got mates like that are doing big sentences, you know what I mean? We, we call it the MOT when we go into prison, you know what I mean? You go in, good food, bit of gym and that, come out nice and healthy, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was our phrase, we go in for the MOT. There's a lot of fighting in jail, I mean, I said, the first time I went to Bullendon, I see some guy get a kettle, hot water, with acid from the uh, cooker cleaner, chucked in his face, and he got sliced up in his face and beat with a chair leg. And like, that's for no reason for anything. Like, well, what are you looking at well, uh, next week? For no at the end of the day, I thought about leaving. Do you know what? There's no point. There's nothing for me out there outside Avonland. Like, it's my home and my ends, and I look after this to the day I die. That's, that's it. These are my true boys. They're my true boys. It's quite a tight community, you know what I mean? Like, we all stick together and that. We're family around here, you know what I mean?
I basically lived in Oxford, was getting in loads of trouble. And then, then my mum thought, yeah, move down here to keep me out of trouble. Obviously that ain't worked. Missy. We have to meet my dogs one day. Especially uh, dogs you got? Two pit bulls and two staffs. Yeah, they're not so friendly. To be fair, I haven't really seen you too fucking much, have I? Nah, so I mean, like, this is the longest they've seen me. They're like, they're probably thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, what's he doing here? Yeah. What's he doing here still? All, all of you lot, you all just have stupid moments. Like, obviously, yeah. when you're drunk, like, you go and do stupid, you know what I mean? Proper stupid things. Yeah. One day I'll learn. Just don't follow the footsteps. I'm gonna follow your footsteps, am I? How old was you when you first went to prison? Fifteen. About fourteen and a half. Yeah, fifteen. I've done, five, I've done five years in jail already. Obviously, I miss my boys and that when I'm in there. I'm not with no gay shit, but when I when I when I ring them and that, and they're like, "Yeah, I've been partying or that," I'm like, "For fuck's sake, why do I do it, man?" You get a reputation from it, innit? Yeah. Like, yeah. People like get like, oh, he's been jailed. He must be a crazy little fucker. That's what how people think of me like. Oh, he's been jailed. Like he's scary, but I'm not. Everyone's got a temper to him. I'll just use it in a like in a negative way, isn't it? In the wrong way. Yeah, always have done. Hmm? Got that when I was 15. <sighs> Don't think anyone will forget coops. <laughs> What was that from? Getting chased by all the old bill fell off a six foot roof. I was young, you do dumb stuff when you was young. Bit of adrenaline rush. Was the store then for a bit of an adrenaline rush? That was just a mad drunken fucking money thing, what I needed. I thought I was going to get at least £600, but didn't get fuck all. A bottle of cider, I got dropped at the door. <laughs> Done it, so I got a Deal with the consequences, isn't it? Do the crime, do the, do the time. I've always been like that. I always do the time, and I don't care. So, oh, yeah, I've got um, gym in an hour as well. Keeps you going to the gym? Nah. No. I keep trying to convince him to, but yeah, you know, yeah. not, in, not when I'm like this, ill. Yeah, he's not ill, he's not it. ill. Yeah, I am. I feel weak, Ross. I feel like sick and all that, bro. It's not ill, it's an excuse. It's not, I'll come gym for Monday. Oh no, I'm in jail. <laughs> yeah, I got gym Monday in jail. I'm a fully qualified, fully qualified paint and decorator because of jail. Yeah. So I benefited something, but obviously you just need to put it to use, but I don't. I just go back to crime. <laughs> in contrast to his mild nature, Coops has had a long history of disorder and violence. His convictions include battery, affray, GBH and possession of an offensive weapon. Coops is a fucking idiot, like, that's why we try and keep him, like, under our wing, you know what I mean? Because when he goes and hangs around with all the youngers, he's easily influenced into going to do stupid shit, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, they, they're all growing up thinking they have to prove something and that still, you know what I mean? He just ends up getting himself caught up in stupid shit. When you go to prison, like, when you're younger, and you think it's cool, do you know what I mean? You come out, everyone's mystery, you're like, best day yeah, of your life, yeah. isn't it? Like, everyone's like, yeah, you've been pushing the edge, do you know what I mean? Like, you get all the girls, you do. do it you know is, what I mean? it's almost like you get Now it's this shit, though. Now when you go to jail, it's like, shit. You're led there, you're like, what the fuck am I doing in here? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got bad anger problems and like, trust issues and that with his girlfriends, do you know what I mean? That's why he always goes to jail when he gets a girlfriend. He just goes mad. Like, since he's been with Gemma, he's done like, loads of shit, do you know what I mean? The usual walk to town. My name's Gemma. I'm Ashley Cooper's girlfriend. Like everyone around here calls him Coops. I was brought up on Saxton Road, but you can still like associate with the gangs and stuff and still be on the straight path. It's just some people choose drink and drugs. I was lucky I got into a shit relationship and was like moved away from all like drinking every weekend. And then I had Morgan, so it kind of kept me on the straight. <laughs> It was lucky I had a controlling relationship that kept me away from it all. Yeah, like, I've got two kids and they're from two different dads and my eldest girl, she don't see her dad at all. 
he's a complete waste of space and my youngest has only just started seeing his dad. He was an idiot and I got a restraining order on him. He fucked about a lot. Ashley's like taking him on. Him and my eldest, they got such a good bond. They just run off to the park together. He can't go anywhere without her. She'll make him go to Millet's farm and stuff and get his face painted like a bunny rabbit. He's got this big like hard man front with his like the boys round here. But like he is such a family man, it's unreal. It's hilarious. <laughs> he's good enough to be a dad, like, and he is man enough to be a dad. It's just keeping him outside to get him to be a dad. <laughs> They don't let him work because he's got a criminal record. No, some people just need a chance in life and they're not willing to give the chance to the people that need it. So then they just, they come out of jail, they turn to drink, they turn to drugs. And it just carries on going, they go back to jail and that's the way it always is. Fuckers. <laughs> it's where everybody used to chill down here. I, know. I blocked, I, I used to have a run through bit here, but I put gates up because obviously it was easy for us to get away from the police. Like, if they'd come around this way, we'd run off through there, or vice versa, you know what I mean? So I ended up putting up gates so we couldn't get away from them, the fuckers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we'd, we'd come and just sit around here, you know what I mean? Couple of spliffs, couple of beers, and that. And then when the police decided to come and make a menace of themselves, like they'd usually come round like this way, you know what I mean? Yeah, we'd just run and, through And we'd that. see them go past and that, obviously, and that, so we'd fuck off, you know what I mean, as they're coming round and that, so... Yeah, that's just another one of their battles to try and get rid of us. It's, it's, it's calmed down a lot as the years have got on. Since I've had all the old uh, CCTV and stuff put in, it's calmed people down a bit more, you know what I mean? But. Like it, it used to be really bad in the day. Everyone would be all round here. You'd, you'd have little shits doing run outs of the shop in there, running out with beers and stuff. It, it was like, it was just chaos all the time. Reggie has run the local grocery store for 28 years and is a well-known local figure. A mural in recognition of him hangs on a wall outside the shops. My name is Jinder, but they call me Reggie. That picture was made by a few artists a few years back. It is a good picture. Everybody recognized me. You know, they say, oh, it looks like you. I say, yes, it is me. <laughs> yeah. When I came here, area was um, a bit different than now. Some people was a bit comfortable with me, or some been not comfortable with me. A few years back, somebody threw the petrol bomb <laughs> behind the shop. Lucky we survive. Do you think any of it was racially motivated? It used to be, but it's much better now. This area is lack of so many things. That's why these things happen. The children need something where they can be a little bit busy and a bit more positive. It's very small age smoking. On the very young age, they're drinking. They do steal. Fight, a lot of fight around here. If uh, somebody is naughty or something and not behave well, if I say don't come to the shop anymore, might be as a grudge against me. But you see that sign there, look? That's coming down. We can't have a fucking, I won't say it on camera, an Asian fucking thing around our sake shops. He's going to have a Nazi sign on his forehead. I have a lot of respect from the children because I know their parents, grandparents. So I'm definitely a part of the community. Craig Pitts came out of Rochester Young Offenders Institute in 2011, after three years inside. Within 48 hours, he was sent back to jail, this time over racially aggravated assault, occasioning actual bodily harm. He has just come out after a 21 month stint in adult jail. Oh, I, went there, I went there yesterday, I went down that route. Where? Uh, you didn't. I did. I got pressured into it. What? Doing what? He's one of the cunts as well, pressing oh, me into it. you fuck Catherine? No, Siobhan. You fuck Siobhan? <laughs> the first time I went to jail was when I was 15, and that was for GBH. 
Then after that I was on remand for Frey, ABH, Breach of Asbo. Well, then I got done for nicking a car. Got done for a fray and stuff. The day after I got out, we ended up battering some takeaway driver of some stupidness. And then when I was on remand, I ended up getting done for battering three prison officers. I ended up getting three and a half years for that. And then just done 21 months now. A live boxing match. I don't give a fuck. Go on, Jarvis. 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 Tonight, it's a good night because we've got everyone together getting pissed up and that. I wish it was like that every day. Sit, sit down. Sit, sit down. I go toilet and do that. I say, man, not about Trevor's front door, man. Get off. Get I get some water and wash that away, <laughs> man. <laughs> Stink. Okay, it's called two can madman. That's what he said last night. He was taking a piss last night, like two can madman. Two can madman. Two can madman. Yeah, Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the beast. This is the beast. I've got a job waiting for me, but it's just fucking, I don't think, I don't want to go down that route, or I'll go back down the route where we all get pissed up fighting and that. Show him his knuckle, your knuckles. It's there, there, look at that, from fighting. His knuckles gone all the way back there. That's why he's in jail. That's mad. It is mad, because like, every time I get out, like, all these lot are all starting to grow up more, and they're all like, having kids and that. That's what I think is mad. My f mate here, he's the first one out of us little younger ones to have a kid, and I never thought that would happen. He's part of the younger, like us younger generation. They can't represent no more. Got, they've gone downhill. More people too scared to go to jail. Like, they look at situations and they'd rather walk away. And I think that's wrong. Where you've got the routine in jail and all that, you've got a structure. Then when you get out, where it's so hectic, it is shit out here. I'd, in a way, I'd rather be back in there than out here. Shit out here. I was in wires before we got centres. I had a load of mates in adults. I think they said it was a lot tougher. Then when I got there, I realised it's a lot shitter. Because you don't really see no more fighting and that, and then you feel, you feel lost. The terms olders and youngers come up a lot on Saxon Road. It represents an age-based hierarchy. Respect is demanded from the lower ranks and sometimes enforced physically. He asked it. What's going on? The youngest fucking. He's not representing. See, this what I'm on about. He's a young guy, oh. he's getting beaten by the older. Where's the knife? 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 Oh, what are you doing with me? Oh, what are you giving me for? Oh, you Oh, you Oh, you Don't Oh, you Oh, you Oh, you Oh, wait. Chill out. He's got one bang. He's got one bang. Fuck off, Ian. Hey, hey, it's part of education. There you go. Look, I told you. This is what it's like every day. We just get pissed up. Brother, I love you. You know what I'm doing. Was it fucking no? Fucking you. Jesus Christ. When you step out of line, do you know what I mean? I'm an older, and then when you're oh, saying shit... No, I'm being serious, you know what I mean?
trust me, stick with us more longer, we've got more beers. It'd be a fucking full on brawl. You know what I'm like? Pitsy is obviously the worst one. He's institutionalised. You know I mean, he? normally he comes out and he's back in within two weeks. He come out and he was expecting us to be doing things the same as when he went in. He's he's just got no like concept of the fact that everyone's grown up and you know what I mean. Like he's just he's lost. He's a lost boy. And I like to say, the Reggie fucking thing around the shop that would another stand if I was still out. I don't want to sound racist, but the fucking packy thing. The Packy sign of Reggie, that, that's coming down soon. No, now, Reggie's a legend, Reggie's a legend. Now, he banned me from the shop for, for a stupid little thing about 12 years ago Reggie's and I'm still legend. banned. That sign there, what you see around the shops earlier, that's coming down soon. Nah, Reggie's a legend, Reggie's a legend. But, but, but can have that up.